everyone, it's Christina from Our Wood Home and Christina and Helena. Today I'm showing you um, how I make my simple dresses. This isn't so much a tutorial as um, I guess just a watch me do what I do kind of video. So I'm starting off by um, laying out my fabric. I'm using actually an old bed sheet that's in good shape. I've put the right sides um, together so I'm marking on the wrong sides what will be the inside of my finished dress. So this time, or sorry, this point I'm making the skirt. Um, now to get the right measurements I, let me just consult my notes here, I basically uh, did a big rectangle so I measured my hip and the widest area of my lower half and I doubled that measurement um, for the skirt. So, um, so for my skirt, um, it is 36 inches wide um, along one side of it. So because there's two layers of fabric, it ends up being whatever 36 times two is. Does that make sense? Um, for the length, I just took a tape measure, put it at my uh, natural waist where I want the skirt to start, and then measured um, as far down as I'd like to go, which ended up being 28 inches long, as you can see from that uh, little demonstration there. Next, I'm laying out the fabric for the bodice, which is the upper part of the dress, and I'm making sure it's nice and smooth. Ideally, you'd iron it before, but um, I was just kind of being lazy I guess. So the fabric I'm using to trace is actually a bodice from another dress that I've made recently. I know that it fits properly. Um, I just need to make a slight adjustment since I'm wanting the bodice to be a bit more narrow uh, where it connects to the skirt. If you're interested in knowing more about how I drafted that bodice pattern I'd be happy to share that um, either in another video or in the comments. Now I'm going to pin the bodice together at the shoulders as well as the side seams right there. I don't know if you saw that little pink line along the side, but that's where I'm just taking it in a bit because I want the bodice to fit a little bit um, tighter in the waist instead of being so loose. Usually I do an elastic waist, but um, the dress today is going to be not an elastic waist. It will have uh, fabric ties to make it a little bit more narrow. For the shoulder, sorry, not shoulder, for the sleeves, um, I'm using, again, a sleeve template that I've drawn for another dress, but you can easily find templates for sleeves online. I usually make more of a cap sleeve, but today I wanted to do a bit uh, longer, more like a short sleeved t-shirt style. So I've laid that out on two pieces of fabric and cut out two identical shoulder pieces, as you can see. Now I'm going to um, roll the hem for the sleeves. It's basically folding it over once and then folding it over again and just pinning that in place. If you find this a little bit um, fiddly, you can always roll it up once, sew it down, or um, press it down with your iron, and then come back and fold it up again to have a nice clean edge. Um, I've just been doing this for a while so I don't mind fiddling with it a little bit to do the double rolled um, edge there. And I like to just do this before I actually sew it on to the bodice because it's just a little bit easier and less uh, fiddly. You may find that I use that word a lot. Um, I don't know if it's common outside of my family but it just means like finicky or tricky or something like that. So now I'm just going to sew um, in a straight seam down the hem of my um, sleeve there. Once both of those uh, sleeves are finished, I'm just going to sew across the shoulder seams along the top there, just doing a straight stitch. Now I'm turning this top, the bodice, at right sides 
out. So this is the way it looks if I'm putting it on my body. And now to get these sleeves in place, I'm turning the sleeves right side out, so the right sides together, and pinning um, just along the top where the sleeve meets the bodice. I don't know if that's very clear. I'm kind of struggling to explain it, but um, I don't know if you can see in the video, the finished hem of the sleeve is actually pointed up towards the neckline. And it looks like it's not going to be um, properly done, but you can see after we finish sewing along this um, seam here, the sleeve will be pushed down into place over the shoulder as if it was being worn. Does that make sense? I don't know. I don't know how to explain this. Um, honestly, I always struggled to make sleeves and then I just happened to um, buy a, a pattern for a top or a blouse, I think, and it showed doing this method. It's quite simple once you get the hang of it. Um, it's just, it's kind of hard to explain. I'm sure there's better YouTube videos that will uh, show you step by step what to do, but if you'd like me to show a video um, of this particular step, I will happily do that for you. So I've just pinned the sleeves down um, all along the armhole there, and I'm just going to sew a regular stitch following the curve of the fabric, taking the pins out as I go. You may notice that I didn't um, sew the side seams of the bodice yet because I saw another YouTuber actually um, sewing the sleeves in first and then the side seams. I'll link um, her channel down below. It's Lynette Yoder. And I saw her do that and thought, that is just amazing. So now I do that. And it's a lot easier than um, trying to fit the sleeves in after I've already sewn the side seams. So this is the way I do it now. All right, now, can you see how that ended up? Um, the right sides are facing out as they should be. That's the way we want the blouse to look. But now I've turned it inside out and I'm going to pin along um, under the arm of the sleeve and down the side seam there. Can you see how now it's so much easier to sew that seam than it would be to sew that side seam and then try to squeeze those little sleeves in there? I tell you, Lynn was a lifesaver with that because it saved me so much frustration and stress every time I went to make a top. I was having some camera issues there. Um, and I think I was looking at my phone because my husband was texting me. So again, I'm just gonna sew down um, the under the arm and down the side seam there. This part can be a little bit tricky because you do have to follow the curve under the arm down the bodice um, along the side, but it does get easier with practice. I encourage you just to go um, slowly to use the slow setting on your machine. Now, for some reason, um, my camera stopped recording when I was pinning the neckline down, but I just did the same rolled technique as I did for um, the cuffs of the sleeves. And again, if you find this to be a little fiddly, you can always um, just sew or pin down one roll first and either press it with your iron or go along and just sew it down um, and then do it again just so that you have a nice clean edge and that there's no raw edge um, on the inside. Again I recommend going slowly if you're new to um, making clothes using a sewing machine just because you do have to follow the curve of the neckline and you don't want it um, to be wonky or uneven. So going slowly is the best um, way to go if you're new at this. And I didn't show um, footage because again, my camera stopped recording, but to get the neckline the way I want, I just uh, tried the top on and um, marked along where I wanted the front neckline to be. 
So now I'm just sewing along the side seams of um, the skirt here. I just do a straight stitch. You may notice um, that I'm not using a serger. I'm just using a regular sewing machine and that's because I don't have a serger. So I'll explain later how I deal with um, the raw edges on my finished garments. In terms of seam allowance, I just do, um, I don't know, a small amount, like a pinky's worth. I know that's not very helpful. Um, I, I have small fingers, I don't know, that's not gonna help either. But I don't need a large seam allowance. Um, I think it's just maybe a personal preference. Okay, um, I don't know where the other part of this footage is, but right now I'm gathering the skirt. So this is done because um, I want the skirt obviously not to be super wide and I'm not as wide as I made the skirt. So what I did was um, set the stitch length and the space between the stitches to the highest setting, the highest number. So can you see how when I'm feeding the fabric in, it's nice and straight, and when it comes out, it gets kind of bunchy and ruffled or gathered, and that's what I want. So I'm just, I'm not pulling the fabric, I'm just letting it feed through um, naturally and it's making those gathers on its own, which is what we want. I suppose you could do this by hand, which I've done before, and it takes forever. Alternatively, you could just um, manually or, yeah, I guess manually do the gathers when you're pinning the skirt in place, but I found this to be an awful lot easier. Okay, now we're going to attach the bodice to our gathered skirt. As with um, sewing on the sleeves to the armholes there, I'm going to do this um, right sides together. The skirt is currently inside out, so the right sides are um, facing each other and I'm looking at the wrong sides. Now this loose thread is actually not just a loose thread, it's um, the thread that was used to make all those gathers. So I'm just going to pull that. I accidentally pulled it out, so I went back and uh, fixed it on my machine there. But I'm just going to uh, pull the thread to make sure the gathers are nicely spaced, that there's no um, big gaps where there should be some gathers, that sort of thing. Okay, I fixed the, uh, the wonky spot there. So like I said, the skirt is inside out. I am st stuffing the bodice inside the skirt, making sure I line up um, the side seams of the bodice with the side seams of the skirt. And again, right sides are together. And I'm just going to use a couple pins to keep that in place on the left side there. And I'm doing the same on the right side. It's important to make sure these seams line up. Otherwise, when you are wearing your dress, uh, the bodice seam and the skirt seam will not match up and it will just look a little bit crazy. So now I'm just going along making sure that um, the skirt width, the gathered skirt width, is the same as the bodice width. And I'm just pinning that down every so often, uh, making sure that both edges line up. So the edge, the top edge of the skirt and the bottom edge of the bodice. I know it kind of sounds um, a bit confusing maybe, but uh, I promise it's easier um, than it looks. Maybe it looks easy and if that's the case, I'm glad. I prefer to do a lot of pins um, just to be safe and then take them out as I go. Although sometimes I leave them in and I don't recommend that because I have broken many needles um, running over pins. It's not fun. So again, just make sure that the gathers are laying nicely, um, that you don't have any really tight gathers in some spots and then really loose gathers in another. It's just not going to look as nice um, when the skirt, or when the dress, sorry, is finished. After um, I'm finished pinning in place, I'm just gonna go and set that aside as we move on to um, creating the little belt ties there. part 
is making um, the fabric ties for uh, the belt, I guess, if you will. So I just cut a strip of fabric, um, a rectangle. I did a few inches wide and I took my waist measurement um, all the way around and did about half of that measurement for each tie there. I find it easier to um, press the fabric in like I'm showing. So along the top we'll do a little seam and then along the bottom we'll do a little seam making sure they're about the same size. Um, both ties are the same size I mean. And then I'll fold the short edges on both uh, the top and the bottom of that little tie there. Um, my iron wasn't working properly and I'm not sure why but I highly suggest you use an iron to do this um, instead of just sewing it without pressing it because it's just not going to be as nice looking in the end. But what I'm attempting to do is um, fold the short ends, press those so that they're nice and um, finished off, no little raw edges there, and then I fold the whole thing lengthwise again. Lengthwise? Widthwise? I don't know. I fold it so that it's more narrow. Um, and I'm going to attempt to press it again so that it's nice and smooth. And I'm going to do that with both of them. Um, I didn't end up having success with my irons, so I just pinned it in place. Not ideal, um, but I didn't really know what else to do at this point. Now I'm going to sew um, along the short edge of the tie as well as the long edge and then the short edge again just to make it nice and clean. I have tried doing this um, where you make it inside out and then try to flip it right side out and it's just a lot easier to do it this way especially since it's um, quite narrow. I'm just doing a straight stitch along here as well. Sometimes I cut off the loose threads as I go, other times I wait until the end, it just really, it's a personal preference. I don't really think it matters either way, as long as you cut off the loose threads before you go out wearing your garment, you should be fine. Also, I'm sorry for the wonky camera angles. Um, I tried using my actual camera, my professional camera this time, and uh, I had to set it up on the tripod and it just, it was different. So. I hope these angles are okay and that you're still able to see everything um, clearly. Now I'm going to bring back my skirt and I'm actually going to um, attach the little ties here on the inside of the skirt. It's actually going to be on the outside, but I'm lining it up with the side seams, one on each side there. Um, and I'm doing this because it's a little bit easier than trying to hand sew the ties onto the, the dress after you're finished. Um, that's what I've done before and I decided to try this technique uh, and it turned out being a lot easier. Just make sure when you're doing this that you um, put the ties in so that they are facing the same way. Remember how we have one long edge, juice break, <laughs> um, one long edge that we sewed along. So make sure that's facing either the front or the back, it doesn't matter, as long as it's the same on both sides. And if that sounds confusing, uh, I promise it's not confusing when you're actually um, holding the fabric in your hands and doing this step. I find with most of um, the sewing techniques that I've learned, it's a lot easier to understand what to do if I'm actually doing it as opposed to just hearing it or even watching somebody else do it. So hopefully that's the same case um, with you and what I'm saying makes sense. Now I'm sewing um, the bodice and the skirt together along the pinned edge, the gathered edge there, and I'm taking care to line up um, the foot of my sewing machine with the edge because I don't want, um, I don't want it to be all wonky and not in line because then when I turn the garment right sides out, 
there will be um, some little gaping spots and I don't want that. Can you see how it would be uh, kind of tricky or fiddly to put all those gathers in by hand while you're sewing if you just didn't do that on the machine to start with? And there's the ties on the outside, yay! Cutting off some loose threads there. Now um, I'm going to be folding up the hem for the bottom of the skirt. This is the same way that I've done um, all the other hems. I just have to go onto the floor because there's not enough room on my sewing table. And again, if you find it easier to just do one fold and then either press it with your iron or sew along that edge first and then go back and do the exact same step again, by all means, do that. Back at the machine now, I'm gonna sew along that little hem a nice straight stitch um, because this is going to be this stitch is going to be visible on the outside of the dress and you want it to look nice. I should point out that this is not a stretchy fabric. Um, if this was a stretchy fabric I was using I'd be doing things a lot differently. My measurements um, on the actual garment would be a lot different. But because there's no stretch here, that I made the bodice looser, I made the skirt more full so that it's still um, modest and comfortable for me. I'm sure I'm going to get somebody asking me um, how long did this take in real time? So it, uh, I spread it out over a couple days because I had other things to do um, besides just sewing a dress and filming it. And uh, filming it took longer than, um, it added a lot of time if I was just making a dress without filming it because I had to make sure the camera was set up properly, I had to make sure things were well lit, that you could see everything. Um, but like I said, I did it over the course of a couple days and I think, um, looking back at all the footage, there was about an hour and a half, maybe two hours worth of footage. Maybe closer to two hours, actually. So it's not a lot of time. Um, I find that cutting it out takes a long time, um, and pinning everything takes a long time. But the actual sewing, it's pretty quick once uh, you get the hang of it, once you know what you're doing. Um, I have been making dresses for myself for a few years now and I tend to just stick to one basic style with no darts um, in the bodice, no no fancy things like that because it's just not really my style um, and I like my clothes to fit a little bit on the looser side so I don't need to worry so much about it being super flattering or that sort of thing uh, but again that's just a personal preference but because I've been doing this for a while I kind of just know I know what to do, I know how to make it um, quick and efficient as well. Now remember I said I don't have a serger, so if you are unfamiliar with the serger, it's the machine that makes those fancy uh, stitches on the insides of your t-shirts or your jeans or something like that, and it just makes sure that there's no loose threads and that your garment won't unravel. So because I don't have a serger, I just do zigzag stitch all along the raw edges of my garments. If I'm making something for somebody else, I will do this multiple times over the same spot to make sure, without a doubt, it will not unravel. But because I'm doing it for myself, I'm just going to do one round um, because I can always go back and redo it if it does end up coming loose in the future. I know it might seem uh, fiddly to do this on a finished garment because there's just a lot more curves and tight areas, but I found this to be better for me so that if I need to make an adjustment, um, like if I need to take it in a little bit or make something a little longer or shorter, then I don't have to unstitch or pick the seam of that zigzag stitch. But if you want to um, do the zigzag stitch before you even start sewing things together, if you just want to cut it out and zigzag all the raw edges, go to town, whatever works for you. 
but this is what uh, what I found to work best for me. I think my camera might have cut out um, partway through this process, but I went along um, the shoulder seams, along the insides of the sleeves and down the side of the bodice, um, across the waist part and the side seams of the skirt. We are almost ready for the grand reveal here. I apologize that it's a little bit out of focus, but um, you get the gist of it anyways. So here we can see the little short sleeves, the gathered skirt there with a nice long length, and there's the little belt tie in the back. I hope you enjoyed this video and found it helpful. Um, if you have any questions or comments, please post them down below or get in touch with me through my blog. Um, as I said before, this isn't so much a tutorial as it is just a watch me make something, but I hope you found it helpful nonetheless. And if you did, like this video. Thank you. Bye.